This is lesson 832D. We're going to continue factoring a polynomial using the rational roots theorem. Today we're going to sketch polynomials and then we're also going to factor polynomials. Now the difference though this time when we're factoring it we're going to get some imaginary solutions and that's okay. We're just going to write those imaginary solutions as a uh, linear factor. So in this example right here x cubed minus 8 what I want to do is we want to use the rational th roots theorem, so the p's over q's. So possible p's over possible q's. So I'm going to get plus or minus p, remember it's p over q. So 1, 2, 4, and 8 over 1. And so that's plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 4, and plus or minus 8. All right, so let's test things out. I know one's not going to work because if you remember the remainder theorem, if I plug in a value and equals zero, that's the same thing as if I factored or I did the synthetic division equals zero. And if just by looking at this, if I enter in one, that's not going to end up being it. It looks like it's going to be two, but I don't know if it's negative two or positive two. So I'm just going to start with a positive two right now. And so I get one for x cubed don't have an x squared, don't have an x, and there's my constant. Add straight down, multiply, add straight down, multiply, add straight down, multiply. There we go. Multiply, add straight down. Yeah, it worked. So then that means right now I have x minus my root so x minus 2 and now counting backwards I have x squared plus 2x plus 4 so I can factor this further now that doesn't factor I can't use the x box method thing also synthetic division none of them are gonna work and the reason why is they're gonna be complex solutions so I'm gonna use a quadratic formula now you will always get something squared. It will always be quadratic for us to be able to use the quadratic formula. So negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. So 4 minus 16 all over 2. That's negative 12. And then the factors of negative 12 so that's going to be let's see how does negative 12 reduce so I know it's going to be I and then I have 12 and so the root 12 that's going to be 3 and 4 and root 4 is 2 so that's going to be negative 2 plus or minus 2 root 3 I all over 2 and then those 2's are going to cancel out and so I'm going to get negative 1 plus or minus 3 root 3 i. So let's write it as linear factors. So I have 2 here. I have negative 1 plus root 3 i and negative 1 minus root 3 i. And so writing it as linear factors, I have x minus 2, x minus my 0. and then I ran out of space so it's multiplied so times right that should be there and then x minus my other root and that right there that is my completely factored polynomial now for this one here once again p's over q's well it's still 8 and it's still 1 so I can just rewrite what they were. Okay, uh, mm, if you remember Descartes' rule of signs, look at the changes. Positive, positive to positive, positive to positive. Nothing changes. So because nothing actually changes, that means I don't have any positive zeros. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 4, negative 8. If you're like, wait, what did I just do? You need to go back to 8, 2, 2 when I talk about Descartes' rule of signs. It can tell you if your zeros are positive or if your zeros are negative based upon how the sign changes right if it changes from positive to negative or negative to positive so I know I only have negative zeros so let's try negative one 
one, two, four, and eight. Mm, it actually might be negative two because see how it's growing, it's doubling. But let's see. Multiply, add, multiply. Yeah, that's not going to work. So let's try negative two. Multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add. Yay, it worked. So I have x minus my 0, right, minus negative 2, which is plus. And now I have x squared, so this is remainder, constant x, x squared, plus 4. So setting this x squared plus 4 equal to 0, or you can use the quadratic formula. Minus 4 on both sides, x squared equals, so square rooting, you get x equals plus or minus 2i. So I can write this as x plus 2 times x minus 2i and x minus negative 2i. And this right here, that's going to be my factored polynomial. So you can use imaginary values, right? It doesn't have to be real values at all. So this is factoring a polynomial in the complex domain, not just the real domain, in the complex domain, which includes both real, check, and imaginary, check. And you could also get a polynomial that's just imaginary values. Now it's really difficult to factor. There are some cases when you would be able to factor it, but in general, if I got, if I get, this was like I had actually an x to the fourth and they were all imaginary, very, very difficult to factor. Um, there might be some other hidden technique that we would have to use, but it, it would definitely be a case-by-case -case basis. For us to have these complex values, we'd have to simplify it into some manner or visualize it in some manner as a quadratic equation. All right, so now let's sketch it, right? This was the graph that I started with. I factored it into this. Now this is all the information that I need to be able to draw a sketch. So the three things that we need to know, we said end behavior. Well, look at this. That is my leading term. It's positive, and the degree is odd. So that means it's going to look something like that. right? My end behavior is going to look something like that. My zeros, well, it's factored here. So I have negative 2, multiplicity 1. Now, we don't count complex zeros as one of these zeros that we need to know on how to sketch it because it, we really can't tell what it's doing with a complex value. And my y-intercept, if I plug in 0 for x, 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 8. So now that we know how to factor it, it's actually much I don't know, maybe it's easier in terms of maybe a little bit more work, but we can still be able to sketch everything that we need to know. And so my graph, negative 2, and behavior starts down here. I know it's 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I know there's my y-intercept. And so I know my graph is going to start here. Something like that. I don't know. It's close enough, right? It's close enough. So it's following the end behavior, crosses the zero because the multiplicity is odd, so it's going to cross, hits the y-intercept, and it follows the end behavior. We're good. So what did we learn today? Nothing generally new. We were just taking pieces of what we already knew about the rational roots theorem to in complex numbers to be able to create that linear factor. And we just took a polynomial and we factored everything. And so what do we use to factor a polynomial? Synthetic division and the rational roots theorem. This does conclude our lesson. If you have any other questions, please leave them in the comments.